So you can see a couple of Toyota Camrys here behind me. What I'm going to wrap together today is two elements of Toyota safety sense that ultimately add to one, which is the car driving itself. So we're here with Toyota Safety Sense. Toyota Safety Sense is Toyota's wrap or whole gambit of safety items they put on the car, which they deem to make you get to your locations here and there safely with you and your family. Now, I want to show you the a combination of things here. One is the adaptive cruise control. Of course, setting your cruise, the only thing you do is set your cruise. As you can see, I'm speeding along at 85 miles per hour. Now you can see the cars coming past. I always love to, I always love to give you a glimpse of the cars, the road, and of course, the steering wheel and everything behind the steering wheel. The reason why I love to do that because you can see how it reacts. Now, so if I'm here, I already have it in cruise, so I'm not going to go through that, but I will touch the button to show how you how to do it. As long as you're going at a speed in which you want to go at, you don't want to fluctuate or whatever, it's not going to go backwards, but you can touch the gas pedal at any time to speed up. Now, all you have to do to set your cruise once you're moving and in drive is tap the car. You can see the icon of the car here. Press that. That sets your cruise. Once you set your cruise, then you can come here and you can speed up, slow down, and you can also use the plus to reside. Now, in addition to that, cancel is in the middle. So anytime you want to cancel it, you can just hit cancel, it cancels, and then you can come back and reset it, get it back up to speed to where you want to be. So if we're sitting here, tap here. Once we tap there, we already have the cruise set in place. Adaptive cruise automatically turns on. You have your choice. You can set it automatically. You can see the two buttons here. Now this is just lane keeping aid, as with most people will call it. And right up top, you have your distance control. That's the distance you wanna follow a car in front of you. Now the display here, you can change, and I'm gonna explain that it just popped up later. Okay, let's just get rid of that. So. You can change it to show that. If you're showing that, it will have your speed limit there, which is nice, so you don't have to forget it or constantly remind yourself of it if you're going past cars that you don't want to see, perhaps on bridges or exits. You can see I have it set to one blue bar. Now, if I press here, I can press once. That lengthens the distance I want to follow the car in front of me. I can press again. That shortens it by a bit. And then if I go one blue bar, that shorten it, shortens it totally to following as close as possible. But one, what I've discovered with Toyota is, even if you set it to the blue one, even if you set it to the blue one, as I have it there, uh, what it does is it's still a safe, a very safe following distance. So you can see the car in front of me there, and I'll tell you what I deem the length that it's following that car to be. So I'm going along and I have it set to the shortest, as you can see there, which is the one blue bar. You can now you can go all the way out to three blue bars, as I mentioned before and shown you before. So I'm going to come back out, and that is, I would say, definitely a three-car following distance. Now, the thing that gets me about Toyota, because that car tends to be speeding up, but it's almost as if I'm standing still, and then I think it catches it and says, oh, let me speed up, and it starts to speed up again. So don't let that alarm you unless you don't want people cutting in front of you. Now, once you have your adaptive cruise and your cruise set, you do have options. One, you can turn off your stern assist active. Now, that helps to start a vehicle. What I discovered is that is more of your lane keeping aid. Now, if I tap one more time, you can also, and you have lane centering active. What you want to have is lane centering active. The reason why, because if you go back to, and I'm going to show you there, steering assistance aid. Now, I have, so let's see. Give me a second, let me readjust here. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the lane centering aid. And what it's going to do is just going to allow me to drift within my lane. And as soon as it catches the white, the yellow line, now notice is it catches it really late. And it more or less lets you ride on top of the line. And then it brushes you back into your lane. Now, side to side, left to right, that's how it's going to react. In order to do the adaptive cruise with the steering assist or 
as what most call it, the pilot assist where the vehicle drives for you, what you want to make sure is both of those are on. Now to turn both of them on, you can't turn off the steering assist. So if you press here, you can turn off the lane centering, but you cannot turn off the steer assist. Steer assist again will allow me to do this, and then it just brushes me back into my lane. Now my hand was on the wheel, so I did that to show you what it does. If I press one more time, and there again, lane centering is active, now I can remove my hands from the wheel and the vehicle is actively driving itself. You have your adaptive cruise set, you have your steering assist, you also have your lane keeping, or what, I, what they call centering aid, lane centering aid active as well. And if you have both, and the car just drives itself. Now here's something interesting about that. One, I found it's quite annoying if you wanna have both of those on, everything active, and you're trying to drive the car. It's quite annoying because as I'm sitting here, I'll be what I deem to be safely in my lane, probably not just off center by centimeters or maybe an inch. And you can feel the vehicle just like, you know, tugging at the wheel to put you back into what it deems to be the center of the lane. That's annoying if you wanna drive the car. But at the same time, if you don't wanna drive the car, as you can see, I've been doing, just take your hands off the wheel it's driving for you soft I have not done a medium arc sharp curve to see how active it is but we've done a couple of mile curves and also straight ahead folks I feel safe after doing this for quite a while because every now and then it kind of gets partly sporadic I guess you could say to where it's like well what it's got it it's got it but it's only done it really once since I've actively been letting the car do it itself and it's no longer annoying because I'm no longer stirring the car and then of course it's fighting me one way or the other now it's just keeping me down the center of my lane and as you can see within my lines as well now I will do want to point this out because every manufacturer here comes a soft curve as you can see the wheel it's just doing its thing which is what nicely what I wanted to do did it all on its own Every manufacturer will have it to be deemed safe to time you. What I mean by time you is they basically want to allow the vehicle, want you to allow the vehicle to do its thing on its own for a certain amount of time, and then they want you to touch the wheel to make sure that you're still there. Now, of course, you probably heard of some manufacturers which are all electric with no gasoline engine that drives itself and you heard of weird crashes and you even heard of one particularly that uh, one guy said he made fly but this is not that car so what it does is now I just touched the wheel I kind of figure it's more of a 15 second count and then you've got to touch the wheel again again now you just saw me touch the wheel you saw me release, my hand's off the wheel, and you can do your own count. So if my 15 seconds isn't exact, do your own count when you see me take my hand off the wheel. But what it does is, I'm gonna go ahead and release the wheel now and I'm gonna take you and zoom in. And what you're paying attention to is you can see the display screen directly behind the wheel. So as I'm going along, hand off the wheel, you're gonna have to take my word for that because I want you to see the display screen. It just gives you that. Now, LTA is Toyota's lane tracing aid. And what the vehicle, what that basically says is it's a gamut of things which is tracing the lanes in the road. Now, it's trying to keep you a safe distance between the two lanes. From the one on the left, which is spotted, and the one on the, I'm sorry, the one on the right, which is spotted, and the one on the left, which is a solid yellow line. That's lane, lane tracing aid. A number of different safety features designed to keep you in the center of the road, just in case you have to take your eyes off the road, it keeps you right down the center. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and set my speed, take you back in, I'm sorry, I was gonna zoom out. Top right-hand corner of the center display, you can see the speed there, so I'm gonna go ahead and jack that up to 87. As you can see, I have my distance set in front, uh, behind the car in front of me, but I think that's a little bit more than just one bar. So yeah, it's, it's, I would want to follow a little bit closer because as you can see, there are cars, it leaves a pretty nifty gap for cars to come in front of me. 
But at the same time, you can see where they slowed down, the car itself slowed down. No, sorry, I got a little bit off track. So I'm gonna zoom you back out, and it's driving itself. I just took my hand off the wheel. So with my hand off the wheel, it does force you to pay attention. You're supposed to be doing that while you're driving anyway, folks. What you're paying attention to, display screen, LTA, whole steering wheel. So basically what it wants you to do is grab the wheel, and as you can see the display, and it disappears. And it's back to driving itself. Attention span, keeping your eyes on the road. The gripe with a lot of people is, I don't want to have to do this. Folks, you're supposed to keep your hand on the wheel anyway. And if you have to take a call, if you have to text, if you have to eat, if you have to get a swig of water or a drink of water, of course, swig where I'm from, South Georgia, you can do that in comfort and knowing you're going to be right down the center of your lane. Now, if we were in stop and go traffic, no problem. You can do this too. Vehicle will take you from five miles per hour, two miles per hour, all the way up to 100 miles per hour, depending on what traffic is doing in front of you. So I'm going to place my hand back on the wheel because it's alerting me. Now I'm going to zoom back out so you can see the whole, everything functioning properly and traffic in front of me. Now, the distance I mentioned, Tesla just jumped in front of me, so now it creates that distance I wanted to follow again. That's going to annoy the hell out of people behind you, so I would kind of suggest you do this. You can see my foot area here, so I'm just going to give it a little gas. If you're in cruise, don't worry. Give it gas as long as you're going faster than the mile per hour you have set. You don't have to worry. Your cruise will stay active. And I've even seen with Toyota here, if you're going forward, like I'm on the highway and I'm still rolling forward one direction, not much braking, not much gas. If you just take your foot off the gas without applying the brake, your cruise control is still, still active. So you don't have to worry about setting your cruise, even if it slows down slower than what you would want it. Um, your cruise is still set. Now, of course, the driver assist, which is primarily what this video is going to be about. I mentioned the other things because they have to be active in order for all of this to go on. Now, I just showed you cruise control is all to the right. Uh, the buttons on the steering wheel. You can see everything around the circle there. Cancel in the middle. You can also see the car as far as distance, which is here and your lane keeping aid here. That is your active cruise control along with Toyota's lane tracing assist. Now, let's just say if I did want to speed up, and what most people will hate about the lane key, lane tracing or the pilot assist, so if I do this, okay, it appears I would be better off by being in the right lane. So if I go to pass, now I'm behind this car, so it's going to slow me down. And then when I come back over, there's no car in front of me, it speeds back up to the speed of the car you can see in a distance there, which is the white SUV. Most people hate that because it slows you down. Now there again, if I was to, well, I'm not gonna do that, that's rather dangerous, dangerous. But if I wanted to speed up to pass this truck, but there's a, tr a car in front of the truck that's going slower, so once I do this, it would start to slow me down because it then would pick up the car in front of me, and as I get over, it can push me in the incoming traffic behind me, which could cause an accident. So if you're doing that, make sure you keep your foot steadily on the gas and you're moving forward rather than allowing the adaptive cruise control to do all that for you. Just keep your foot on the gas and you don't have to worry. If I was to get over behind a Tesla here, it simply would keep going forward rather than breaking me because I'm too close to that car, taking into account the distance I've said I want to follow the vehicles in front of me. So that is your adaptive cruise control with your lane tracing assistance all active at one time which all are a part of Toyota safety sense and what I'm gonna do is because I know I mentioned to you curves I know I mentioned to you how it's gonna react I'm gonna hush now because I think you should have a good explanation of how it works and I'm just gonna show you the process or show you it in action so I'm gonna start with my hand on the wheel so that's more of like a reset. So it's going to give me what I deem to be a 15 second count. And then I'm going to release 
and I'll just allow the vehicle to do it itself and you can see how it reacts. Now, number one is, uh, well, let's just do it. Now, of course, if you're not paying attention and you do not pay attention when it asks you to apply steering, I'm going to show you, well, here's a little, he jumped in in front of me. My vehicle works to create that distance once again. I can tap the gas and I can go around all of them. Now, back into action here. So here comes somewhat of a soft, soft curve. You can see the wheel reacts. I'm gonna zoom back in so you can see the display. It's gonna tell me to apply stirring, but I'm not gonna apply the stirring. I'm gonna show you what it says and I'm gonna show you how it reacts. So I'm not gonna apply the stirring. This is what it's gonna tell you. And then it just allows you to drift out of your lane. So it's almost as if it's telling you, okay, you're just being hard-headed. You're not paying attention. You're not listening. Do your own thing. Now I'm going to zoom out, and it's going to tell me the same thing. You can see the display behind the wheel. You can see the road, and you can see the wheel. So I'm going to release again. And I'm not going to apply the stirring. So it tells me, there we go. And it allows me to drift right out of my lane and lose control. So that's what happens if you don't pay attention. But if you pay attention and you continually follow instructions by simply apply stirring, you can keep it in this for six, seven, eight, nine hours as long as you're touching it to let it know you're still active, you're still there it's got you safe. I would use this more than I would drive myself because I hate fighting a vehicle. If you are traveling, whether you're going through downtown Atlanta where traffic can be backed up or whether you're on the open four lane, three lane highway here in South Georgia, just past Tifton, uh, yeah, definitely use it. You're not only keeping the people in the car with you safe, you're also keeping the people around you safe just in case you do doze off or you have to take a drink of water.